grade 12 pre-cal, lesson 6.2, the unit circle. So there's equations that describe circles with a radius of one, and we just break it down as x squared plus y squared equals one. That's what it looks like on here. Basically one, 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 and one all the way around. This is a unit circle. So we can talk about functions, right? A function is a pairing of numbers. So often we use them as pairing as x and y. Uh, so for instance, this function should look familiar. y equals x squared quadratic makes pairs of numbers. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 2, 4, right? So there's a group of functions called circular functions that relates to the size of the central angle and the x and y coordinates on a unit circle. And you'll see something you'll be like sine theta equals a half, right? And we know sine is like opposite over hypotenuse or y over r. We can use that. And then we can talk about with the angle in there, we often use theta, right? It's a little circle with the line through it. It's a Greek letter and represents the angle measure that we have not specified. It's something that we're looking for. So we can talk about angles in standard position, right? We have the initial, right? Wherever it ends out is the terminal arm. And we can talk about whether we go positive, which is going this way, counterclockwise, or we can talk about negative, which is going clockwise. So this is just basic breakdown of uh, common things that you need to know. So flip the page and go to the second part. So we have S is the arc length, R is the radius, and theta is that central angle. Now the only difference is we're going to talk about doing it in radians as opposed to when we used to do it in degrees. So in radian measurement, the angle is the ratio of the intersected arc and the radius. So there's our formula. Theta equals S over R. So when you're dealing with this, sometimes you have to do what's called a wrapping function, right? And what it is, is this is how many times things go around. So for instance, you can go around the unit circle once, but you could also go around it twice or three times or four times, and you can either go positive or negative. So you can either go positive counterclockwise or negative clockwise. So give the quadrants for this one here. So we're looking at a point and we're going 11 pi over four and negative pi over six. Okay. Well, 11 pi over 4, we can break that down to 2 plus pi, or sorry, 3 over 4 pi, and it breaks down. So, okay, how does that break down for this quadrant? Well, the 11 pi over 4 can break down into 8 pi over 4, which is just 2, so all the way around once, and then 3 pi over 4, and you can convert that to grades. We can find out that that's in quadrant 2. Now, don't stress if you don't get that right, or, right away. We're going to memorize the unit circle coming up. Uh, negative pi over 6, right, you can change that to degrees if you want for now at this step, but we're going from the, from the initial arm and we're going negative backwards, so we're in quadrant 4 for this one. Okay, so go to do the third page here, and let's talk about, here's two more examples here. So let's give a positive coterminal angle. You've got to remember what coterminal is. It's just another angle that shares the same one as the original. So 600. Now you think about 600. That's, we've got to go around a unit circle, don't we? So how many times? We start the initial arm, we go around once. Bang, that's 360. Then how much further do we have to get to 600 degrees? Well, that's another 240 degrees, right? So 240 and 600 are coterminal angles because they share the same terminal point. Okay, what about 7 pi, sorry, negative 7 pi over 6? So one way to think about this is if you go around the unit circle once, that's 2 pi. Another way to write 2 pi is 12 pi over 6, right? That represents the same thing an equivalent radio. Okay, so 12 pi over 6 subtract 7 pi over 6 is 5 pi over 6. So if we come back, we start the initial arm, and we go back negative 7 pi over 6, we end up here in quadrant 2, and the coterminal angle, angle for that one, if it was positive, is 5 pi over 6. Okay, example 3 here. What if they give you, let's say the terminal arm goes through a point A, which is negative 3 comma 5. Now think about where negative 3 comma 5 is, right? Negative 3, you go over the x, and then 5. So that's in quadrant 2. Well, that's our x and our y. What we want to know is, hey, what is r? What's the length of that one? Well, we can do good old Pythagorean theorem, right? Uh, negative 3 squared, 5 squared, we end up with 34. And remember, you can leave it in radical form. That's more accurate. So what we end up is we know which 30, root of 34. Okay, so what's our coordinate points? Well, you could look at it as x is x over r and y over r. That's the easiest way to do it. So x is negative 3 over r, which is root of 34, right? And you can rationalize the denominator if you want. And then we can look at the y value is 5 over root of 34. Same thing. Okay, so let's take a picture of this. This makes more sense, I think, graphically if you look at this. So we put our, we put our x in and we put our y and we put our points on here. So we know it's quadrant 2. So negative 3 is our x, 5 is our y. 
well, how do we find 34, right? Good old Pythagorean theorem. R squared equals x squared plus y squared. So root of 34. And leave it in root of 34 before. Now, our points, right, if you want to break this down, there's our x, negative 3, right? Negative 3 over root of 34. Or another way to think about it is cosine, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse, if you want to do it that way. Uh, sine is y over hypotenuse, right? Or opposite over hypotenuse. Now, if you want to rationalize the denominator, that's what we did, uh, did right here. Times both the numerator and the denominator by root of, thor, uh, root of 34. There it is there. Negative 3 root of 34 over 34. Do the same thing with the y value. You could have left it in the other form for this question here, but rationalizing the denominator is always a good thing. Okay. So last page here. So this is, again, this is all just general knowledge. And as, there's a lot of repetition in this one, but I'm just trying to get it, make sure it goes through, you know exactly what you're doing. So if you look at general knowledge of right triangles, this is what we were talking about. Cosine is x over r, right? Sine is y over r, and tan is y over x. If r is 1, so for instance, this is if the radius is a different length, but if the radius is 1, then we just know, hey, yeah, cosine is x, because it's x over r, and r is 1, so it's just x. Uh, sine is y over r, or y over 1, which is just y, right? You can look at it that way. A um, couple things. We already talked about unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1, but you could also write it this way. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 is another way to write it. Here's our unit circle here, and this is our all soup turns cold method, right? This tells you where things are positives and negatives. Uh, okay, so let's look at the example number 4. Determine the quadrant in which uh, p theta it will lie if sine is right there, less than zero, which means sine is negative. Where is sine negative? Well, sine is negative down in quadrants three and four, right? Sine is negative, quadrants three and four. Next part here, tan is greater than zero, which means where's tan positive, and cosine is less than zero, so where's cosine negative? Okay, so tan is positive in quadrants, right, one and three. Cosine is negative in two and three. So what's common to both of those? You can see, yeah, three is common. So for both conditions to be true, it has to be lying in quadrant number three. Now, this unit, or sorry, this exercise also has some exercises after it in the notes. And these are just from an older book that we use. And it's really good. So these are exercise to the unit circle. Um, there's also answer key that goes with that one too.